Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we're going to discuss the, the spread of COVID-19 in India and particularly, particularly its resurgence in cities like Delhi. So both these aspects are there. A second round of increase that is now currently visible, but also it's spread throughout the country. When you look at the total number of COVID-19 patients, active cases around the world, total number of people who have been till now who have been infected and shown symptoms of the disease or what would be called identified cases, India is very rapidly catching up with the United States. The United States has been the front runner in the epidemic. It ignored initially the epidemic. And it has paid the price of that because it's really spread quite far and wide in the United States from certain states which are affected earlier to now newer and newer areas. If we look at India, India is now number two, but on the number of new cases, and we have been saying this for quite some time, we have been number one for, for a long time now. Three countries are on the top of the list in terms of new cases. One is, of course, India, which is almost touching 100,000 now. So within a day or so, it seems the new cases numbers are, will be more than 100,000. There is no flattening of this curve, and we'll discuss this just a little later. The US is about 38,800 odd cases, and Brazil is about 40,000 cases. So these are the three which stand out in the world from all the other countries who are all below 10,000, maybe one or two are above 10,000. I think we have Argentina, which is about 11,000 cases, but Spain is about 10,000 cases now, but all others are way behind these three countries. So these are the countries which are today shaping the way pandemic is developing in the world. And particularly in the case of India, we have the further issue that you have resurgence in certain areas. By the way, that's also something that's taking place in Europe. Countries which had controlled their epidemic earlier, like Spain, Italy, France, are seeing a renewed resurgence of cases. So that's something to worry about there, but it is not nothing on the scale we are seeing, for instance, in towns like, in the cities like Delhi, where the numbers had gone down somewhat in the middle, but has come up again. We'll discuss more of this later. But if we look at the picture, it's very clear that India is in a very critical state and we are in, at the moment, seeing only the expansion of the epidemic, both geographically and also more numbers in cities like Delhi and Pune. Let's look at now the detailed charts that we use click on this has and we'd like to start with new cases. And if you look at new cases, you will see that some, some of the states had flattened, had gone down, but all of the states now, except barring one or two, seems to be an upward curve again. Here is Delhi, the numbers are rising and we'll look at it when we look at the cities charts as well. But if we look at, for instance, UP, it's continuously rising. If we look at Tamil Nadu, however, there is some flattening that has taken place. That's something we, we need to watch. And if we take, for instance, places like Gujarat, they seem to have flattened earlier and they still seem to show a certain degree of flattening. So we have a mixed bag as yet. Some states are rising, some states are flat, some states did go down for a little while, as Delhi did, but has now started to rise again. So these are some of the picture, these are some of the issues that we need to take up in more detail. If we come to the India map, we don't have a district-wise map as yet, but if you look at the India map, then you will see on our uh, map uh, chart that we have on our site, you will see that it is now spread to almost all the states and states above 10,000 are 
the bulk of the Indian states. It means bulk of the Indian states now show the epidemic COVID-19 cases have reached more than 10,000 in terms of active cases. We're not talking of total cases, which are of course larger. So more than 10,000 active cases are there in every state. If you look at total cases, it's clear that bulk of the Indian states are above 20,000. This is the number of total cases. And there are a significant number of those who are above 3,20,000. Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, and Tamil Nadu. All of them are above 3,20,000, 320,000. So not a nice picture uh, that we are seeing. The, we had a shoot. Look, we had a look at the district level figures earlier, earlier in our show on Monday, and we had seen that it has spread to almost all districts. Very few districts today are out of the grip of the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is the large picture that we have, that it has spread quite far in different districts, and therefore the pandemic spread is now much wider and much deeper in the country than earlier. It's not a question of a few places, a few localities in cities and towns, but it is now quite widespread. And we do not seem to see any slackening of the growth of the epidemic. In fact, this is one of the things we had commented earlier, that India is one of the few countries which in spite of a draconian lockdown, did not show any slowing down of the epidemic. We had argued that this is because of lockdown was done prematurely without any preparation. And later on, it led to large scale migration and therefore the purpose of the lockdown itself was defeated. And that's because it was looked upon as if it's a large curfew, large law and order problem to be met by section 144 and curfew and not by the measures which needed to be prepared in advance for lockdown to really succeed. We had a failed lockdown and we have spread of the disease and now it's really spread all over the country. Unless we have a collective approach with the government and the people working together, and the government would be in really the central and the state governments, we will not really work out what is to be done at the moment. Let's look at the cities, for instance. So if you look at Delhi, it is now running at about 4,300 odd numbers right now. <clears throat> In the last, uh, this is a seven days average. If you take a single day rise, Delhi saw roughly 4,300 number of new cases. This has happened in a matter of 20, 25 days that we have seen the figure change from something like 1,100 to 4,300. So one of the sharpest rises in numbers that Delhi has seen. So this does create a problem that is it going to grow? Yes. Why? Because the unlockdown now has mean, meant that the metros are going to start, are starting. There's also talk about bars, cinema halls being made open already Delhi markets if you go there you will find the crowds are there if you go to the roads you will see roads are quite full so it's clear that delhi as it returns to normalcy you have a sudden spike of cases again and it sort of synchronizes with the unlockdown procedures we have followed we have not been able to we have not succeeded in our so called micro containment by which people who are confined to their homes when they're ill. If they're very sick, they're taken to hospitals. So this isolation of the people, this has not succeeded. And it's not surprising because given the kind of density of population in Indian cities, this is very, very unlikely to succeed as simply as it is being thought of. If you put people who are sick, let them remain at home, they'll infect the families. They'll, they need other support people to come and support them. They will get infected. This is what seems to be happening, that you have cascading infections that are taking place. At least the good statistic, which is still there, even though the numbers are high, both in Mumbai and Delhi, 
and Delhi particularly because it's showing a rising graph as of now. What we have is the active cases still remain relatively low. And if the active cases remain low, as it is currently, then what happens simply is that at least your hospitals are able to cope with the kind of patient that may be coming in to the, uh, to the hospitals. So the fact that if you have 20, 25,000 people may stretch the hospital system because at least 20, 25% of them can be seriously ill, maybe 15% go to the hospitals. But that is not a very big pressure in a city like Delhi or Mumbai, which can take the pressure of say, 2,000, 3,000 people coming for COVID-19 treatment to the hospital. So that's, we are well able, well able to take care of this hospital demand that may surge as a consequence. But if it continues for very long, this surge, then it is possible the numbers who would need hospitalization would rise and we would have cons consequently problems. So that is something to watch, but at least the hospitals at the moment do not seem that they're likely to be overwhelmed. So the coming back to the issue, what is to be done? And that's a key issue. What we see missing completely in the current scenario is that any response by either the central government or a concerted response by the central and the state governments, what is to be done? In fact, as of now, under the Disaster Management Act, all the powers are still centralized to the central government who have also issued under the Ministry of Home various notifications. It's also interesting, all these notifications are coming from Ministry of Home Affairs. It is still, the nodal ministry for the epidemic is still the Home Department, which is the police, essentially. The government, central government has said, we'll directly talk to the district administration. Well, again, the approach is a top-down administrative approach using the police in, by and large to try and control the epidemic, but the police is not equipped to do it. And it needs a much, much more inclusive approach of the communities, of the people, of the local administration and the state government. None of this seems to be happening, but it is amazing that the health minister, the health ministry, the health officials are missing. They don't appear anywhere. The Prime Minister, who came in early, declared lockdown, 18 days, Mahabharata war would be over, 21 days, the Corona war would be over, is now completely missing. We don't hear of him talking about the COVID-19 again. And even about the economy, which there is a real crisis, because unless you can address the problem of the epidemic, you are not going to be able to solve the problem of the uh, economy either. 4,300 people become in, you know, ill just in one day in Delhi, which is what the tests show, and the actual numbers could be higher, then it's very unlikely you would reopen the city in any economic sense of the term. So you will still see people not consuming, not going to markets for consumption, except absolutely necessary consumption. People, getting people to come and do stuff at home may not happen. So you are going to see a very big hit of the informal economy, which is already taking place. Necessities will continue, but that's only a small fraction of your economy. So under these conditions, we would have expected the central government and the Ministry of Health particularly take the lead and say, what, is, what are we going to do? Okay, this hasn't worked. What is working? What is not working? And let's get everybody together and see how we can beat back the epidemic. At the moment, we seem to have given up. If we look at what the government is doing, it's talking a little bit of the economy. It's talking about defense, northern borders. And it seems that the attention is, at least for the media, is entirely on one particular case of an unfortunate young man, a very promising film career, who committed, or by all accounts, seems to have committed suicide. But that has become the media sensation. And we have a complete witch hunt going on in the media in an attempt to take the attention away completely from the seriousness of the epidemic in the country and also the seriousness of the economy. Coming back to the other issue, which is vaccines. We are all waiting for vaccines. 
We have discussed vaccines a number of times in our various shows. It's very simple. Yes, vaccines will control the disease. There's no question that we are all convinced it will control the disease. But the first set of vaccines which may come may be moderately successful. They will need to be tweaked, improved before we have really much better vaccines available. But the first line of defense is going to the first vaccines that appear on the market. Now here, are the, here is the catch. AstraZeneca, which is supposed to be the front runner, which is called the Oxford vaccine, has had one particular case, probably the second time it has happened in the trials for AstraZeneca, that the person has shown some adverse reaction, which could be the vaccine, which should be something else. That's yet really to be established. So the trials have stopped for the time being. And Serum Institute, which wanted to continue the trials, has also now suspended the trials after the drug authority in India told them to do so. So there is a bit of a question mark on the front runner. But let's, ex let's also agree that all vaccine trials have to go through this. There will be unexplained illness, which need to be checked. And if it is completely unconnected to the vaccine, the vaccine trial will again continue. So this is not surprising. This is apparently what happens in all vaccine trials. And that's why you have large phase three trials just to address whether there are such cases because of the vaccine. So I wouldn't think that is much cause to worry. But the second cause to worry, and that's really something we should start thinking about, that it seems that almost eight to nine billion doses of vaccines have been blocked by what would be called the rich countries. And they have blocked three times their population, each of them. So they have not just blocked for themselves, but they've also blocked three, three sets of vaccines, different sets of vaccines to cover their beds. So the US has, I think, procured already placed orders, not procured. 900 doses of such vaccines from different manufacturers. Other, other countries are also following suit, notably the European Union and Australia has also joined that recently. In this context, will the rest of the world get the vaccines? Will they get vaccines in time? Will they get vaccines at a cost which is reasonable? Will they get access to the most successful vaccines? They're all open questions. India is lucky. It has at least three major vaccine manufacturers in the country. Serum Institute is the largest uh, generic vaccine manufacturer in the world. So we have some leeway, we have some leverage over the vaccine manufacturers. At least a part of the manufacture should be available to the Indian people. But are we doing anything to scale up the vaccine manufacturing by investing in more infrastructure for producing vaccines? What about the cold chain? We have done polio vaccines. Yes, that is true. But nevertheless, the numbers were much smaller per year. Now we have to vaccinate 1.3 billion Indian people. And a lot of these vaccines, in fact, most of the first run of vaccines are going to require a cold chain. So are we doing anything about that? These are all questions. I'm not saying the government isn't doing anything. But what it is doing is not visible to us there seems to be a shroud of secrecy around both the government policies, how to combat the epidemic right now, the phase that we are in, or about the vaccines when they become available. So I think these are all open questions we have, and we need to ask the government. We need political parties. We need to have other media organizations ask the government, what is the plan on these two counts? And let's not think it's epidemic versus the economy. That way lies neither addressing the economy nor addressing the epidemic. I'll stop here. Do keep watching News Click. Do visit our website.